Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 20th of November. Phase 3 trials of India-made COVID vaccine begin. Minister takes shot. India-Bhutan jointly launch phase 2 of debit and credit card payment network Rupay. And Afghanistan, Pakistan agree on shared vision for peace and stability in the region. As India's COVID-19 tally surpassed the 9 million mark on Friday, phase 3 trials of co-vaccine India's indigenous COVID vaccine began in country's northern Haryana state. One of the candidates to take a shot of the potential vaccine was Haryana's Health Minister Anil Vij, who offered to be the first volunteer for the trial dose. India's COVID-19 tally surpassed the 9 million mark on Friday with 45,882 new cases, while the recovery surged to 8.4 million, pushing the national recovery rate to 93.6%, according to the Health Ministry data. As search for a vaccine against COVID-19 continues worldwide, Phase 3 trials of Covaxin, India's first indigenous COVID vaccine, began on Friday in northern Haryana state. One of the candidates to take a shot of the potential vaccine was Haryana's health minister Anil Vij himself. Vij said he had offered to be the first volunteer for the trial dose to encourage people. This is two phases of the first phase. पूरे किए जा चुके हैं तीसरा फेज इसका आज आरंभ हो रहा है जिसमें 25800 लोगों पर इसका ट्रायल किया जाएगा मैंने अपने आप को इसके लिए ऑफर किया है कि आप सबसे पहले परीक्षण मेरे ऊपर करिए ताकि लोग निर्भीक होकर बिना किसी डर के इसके लिए लोग आगे आ सकें मीनवाइल पुलिस इन इंडियन कैपिटल न्यू दिल्ली व्हिच इज फेसिंग अ शार्प सर्ज इन द वायरस केसेस ऑन फ्राइडे स्टार्टेड फाइनिंग पीपल फॉर नॉट वेयरिंग मास्क एट ऑल और प्रॉपर्ली विद रुपीस 2000 फॉलोइंग अ गवर्नमेंट ऑर्डर Citing situation in the national capital, Delhi government has also issued directions to all private hospitals to reserve 80% of their ICU beds and 60% of non-ICU beds for COVID-19 patients and postpone dates of non-critical surgeries. Delhi, currently being the worst hit city in India, recorded 43,221 active cases of COVID-19 as of Friday afternoon. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, along with his Bhutanese counterpart Lote Sharing on Friday, launched Rupay Card Phase 2 that will allow Bhutanese cardholders to access the Rupay network in India. The Rupay Card is an Indian debit and credit card payment network with acceptance at ATMs, POS devices and e-commerce websites. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, along with his Bhutanese counterpart Lote Sharing on Friday, launched Rupee Card Phase 2 that will allow Bhutanese card holders to access the Rupee network in India. The Prime Minister of the two countries had jointly launched Phase 1 of the project during Modi's state visit to Bhutan in August last year. In his speech via video conferencing, Prime Minister Modi spoke about the deep cooperating between the countries in a gamut of fields, including ISRO's preparation to launch Bhutanese satellites into space. He also applauded the patience and governance of Bhutanese citizens and government in tackling the COVID-19 pandemic. Bhutanese Prime Minister also applauded India's COVID-19 response and appreciated Modi's leadership in tackling the pandemic. मुझे ये जानकर खुशी है कि भूटान में अब तक 11,000 सफल रुपए ट्रांजैक्शन हो चुके हैं। अब अगर कोविड-19 महामारी न होती, तो ये आंकड़ा अवश्य ही इससे भी बहुत अधिक होता। आज 
हम इस महत्वाकांक्षी परियोजना का दूसरा चरण शुरू कर रहे हैं आई एम हैप्पी टू नोट दैट विद दीज अरेंजमेंट्स इट विल बेनिफिट द पीपल्स ऑफ आर टू कंट्रीज टुगेदर वी आर लिवरेजिंग डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजीज टू इनहेंस फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज इन आर रीजन India and Bhutan share a special partnership anchored in mutual understanding and respect reinforced by a shared cultural heritage and strong people to people links. In news from Pakistan, a Pakistani court has sentenced Hafiz Saeed, the founder of Lashkar-e-Taiba, the militant group blamed for the 2008 Mumbai siege to 10 years in prison on two charges of terrorism financing. This comes as Pakistan tries to avoid punitive blacklisting by global dirty money watchdog which judges a country's ability to combat illicit financing including to militant organizations. Hafiz Saeed, founder of Lashkar-e-Taiba, the militant group and the mastermind of the 2611 Mumbai attacks, was sentenced to 10 years in two terror cases by a court in Pakistan on Thursday. The sentences for two charges, five years each, will run concurrently. Saeed is already in jail, serving two sentences of five and a half years each, handed down to him in February this year, which means he will not serve any extra jail time. Saeed has been arrested and released several times over the past decade. He denies any involvement with militancy, including the 2008 Mumbai siege. in which 160 people were killed including americans the united states offered a reward of 10 million us dollars for information leading to the conviction of said the conviction comes as pakistan tries to avoid punitive blacklisting by global dirty money watchdog the fatf financial action task force which judges a country's ability to combat illicit financing including to militant organizations moving on Pakistan People's Party chairperson Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has appealed independent candidates in Gilgit-Baltistan to not trade their victory with Pakistan Tehreek-e-Insaf Party's government which he said was about to end in January. This comes as PTI is poised to form the government in the illegally occupied region as five victorious independent candidates have joined the party. As Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan's Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf or PTI is set to form the government in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit Baltistan with the inclusion of five independents in the party Pakistan People's Party or PPP chairperson Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has claimed that the PTI government in Islamabad would be sent packing by January next year Bilawal while urging the people in Gilgit Baltistan to vote for PPP during the election in constituency 3 on November 22nd once again blamed PTI of rigging and appealed to the winning independent candidates not to trade their victories with the government which he said was about to end kya aap kya ek do mahine tak wazir banna chahte ho apne awam ke kismat bechne chahte ho hukoot bechna chahte ho ya aap do दो तीन महीने इंतजार करें अपने इस सूले पे खड़े हो जाए साथ मिलकर जिदोजहद करें जिल के बर्तिस्तान के अवाम के हकूक का तहफ करें मीन वाइल प्रोटेस्ट हैव कंटिन्यूड इन द इलीगली ऑक्यूपाइड रीजन विद पीपल एलेजिंग द इलेक्शन हेल्ड ऑन नवंबर फिफ्टीन वर रिग्ड द ऑपोजिशन पार्टीज अलायंस पाकिस्तान डेमोक्रेटिक मूवमेंट हैज सेड इट वुड होल्ड अ पब्लिक मीटिंग ऑन नवंबर ट्वेंटी टू इन पेशावर to expose the irregularities in the Gilgit Baltistan polls Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan held talks with Afghan President Ashraf Ghani in Kabul on Thursday at a time when peace talks between the Afghan government and Taliban representatives have stalled and violence is rising The two countries agreed on a shared vision to support peace and stability in both the countries and the wider region and affirmed their intention of looking towards a future relationship built on trust. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Thursday arrived on a day long visit to Afghanistan where he met top Afghan government officials including President Ashraf Ghani and held talks. The talks were focused on a number of important issues pertaining to the Afghan peace process, bilateral relations and cooperation between the nations on mutual interest. 
The Afghan Ministry of Foreign in a statement on Thursday evening said the two countries have agreed on a shared vision to support peace and stability in both countries and the wider region. At a joint news conference in the Afghan presidential palace, President Ghani said Imran Khan's fundamental message was that violence was not the answer, only a political settlement. Khan assured him Pakistan was prepared to do whatever was possible to move to a ceasefire. A comprehensive political settlement for an enduring peace within the, the framework of our values, our constitution and the Islamic Republic is the way to the future. Despite the talks, the level of violence is rising. So uh, my idea of uh, choosing this time to come was to assure you that we will, Pakistan will do everything, whatever is possible, we will do to help uh, reduce this violence and in fact move towards a ceasefire. Violence has remained high in Afghanistan despite the ongoing peace process. During the past six months, the Taliban have carried out 53 suicide attacks, while a spokesman for the Afghan Interior Ministry said 1,210 civilians were among the thousands killed. Maldives President Ibrahim Mohamed Soleh on Thursday inaugurated the first airport developed by the current administration at the northernmost Ha Alif Atoll. The airport is expected to ease travel and provide a boost to tourism. Maldives President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli on Thursday inaugurated the first beachfront airport developed by the current administration at the northernmost Ha Alif Atoll. The President travelled to Hora Fushi for the inauguration in his first visit outside the capital since the COVID-19 outbreak. According to Transport and Civil Aviation Ministry, scheduled flight operations from the newly inaugurated airport will begin within a week. Made with 198 million Maldives Rufaya, Horafushi Airport is expected to ease travel for residents of the region and will also provide a boost to tourism and open up doors for job opportunities and further developmental projects. The coronavirus outbreak has caused huge losses to tourism-dependent Maldives this year, just like any other country around the globe. Now the island nation is trying to recover with such developmental projects. Navies of India and the U.S. participated in advanced air operations in the Arabian Sea on Friday as part of Quad Grouping military exercise with Japan and Australia. Indian Navy's aircraft carrier was seen participating in the drills along with Russian origin MiG-29K aircraft. U.S. Navy's F-18 also participated in the exercise. The Navy's also conducted coordinated firing on surface target during the Phase 2 of the Malabar 2020 exercise. The joint naval exercises in over a decade began earlier this month, seen as part of efforts to balance China's vast military and economic power in the region. The second phase of the exercise was scheduled to culminate on Friday. A month-long training workshop on the traditional Kashmiri folk theatre Bhan Pathar concluded this week in Budgam district of India's Jammu and Kashmir. The workshop aimed to revive the dying art form and make people aware of its importance. A month-long training workshop on the traditional Kashmiri folk theatre form Bhan Pathar by a local theatre group concluded this week in Badgam district of India's Jammu and Kashmir. Several young budding artists in the Kashmir Valley participated in the workshop held with the support from the Ministry of Culture and were trained by experts in the field to carry the art form to the next generation. Bhan Pathar incorporates dance, playing of musical instruments and acting. Older generations fear that the art form is slowly dying and future generations will be oblivious to their traditional culture. We have हमारे हिसाब से क्योंकि जो जदीद दौर है फोक थिएटर ये इसलिए इसको फोक थिएटर कहते हैं क्योंकि इसमें लोगों के ही मसائل है जब हम उन चीजों पे ज्यादा काम करते हैं तो ये कामयाब ज्यादा रहते हैं इन यस्टर इयर्स भान पत्थर वाज यूज्ड एज अ मीडियम टू इंफॉर्म द कॉमनर्स अबाउट कंटेंपरेरी रिलीजियस सोशल एंड पॉलिटिकल इश्यूज थ्रू प्रेवेलेंट स्टोरीज विद टेक्नोलॉजिकल एडवांसमेंट्स इन द फील्ड ऑफ मीडिया and deteriorating security situation, the art form lost its relevance and audience. 
but efforts are underway to revive it. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.